A new React library just dropped and this one I'm really excited about it. So up until now if you wanted to create a React app you had the choice between Feed and Next.js. So Feed is the React framework that you use when you want client-side rendering. So the code basically runs on the client and if you want to render your site on the server then you would go for Next.js because Next.js supports server-side rendering. Of course, Next.js is not the only player. You can also have server-side rendering with Astro, Remix, or Gatsby, but Next.js is by far very popular. And on the React docs, they also point out to Next.js. But I think this is going to change because Tanstack start just got announced. Now, when I decided to make this video, it was on the alpha, but right now it's actually on beta, which is really awesome. And Tanstack is also behind React Query and Tanstack Router. And both these libraries have received very positive feedback from developers because they're super developer friendly and honestly, they're just awesome. And Tanstack start is actually very similar to Tanstack router, which is the routing library that you can use in React. It's very well known for being type safe. So you can use SUD to parse all the parameters that you receive in the navigation, like your L paths and query parameters. So in Tanstack router, you have the same advantages. So you have type safety, which is really good uh, for developing. And it's also something that is, to be honest, missing in Next.js. Now you can check the documentation. I'm going to put the link in the description. And I want to show you right now how a full stack React app can be built with Tanstack Router. This is the example that is provided with uh, the documentation. And here we have basically a full stack application and it's all in 45 lines of code. So that's really cool. So here we have a function read count and this just reads a file. So we have this file, count.tsx, and we parse the content of it as an integer. And here we define an endpoint with create server function. So it's a get endpoint, and the result of it is read count. And then there's an update count function that you can create with create server function, and this time it's gonna be a post request. And here you can have your type validation, and here you're still on the server, so you can write to the file. Okay, now that we have our server-side functions or endpoints, let's jump to the client. So we define a client route with this component and we have a loader function. And here we can uh, call the server function. And the data that you have here in the loader, you can use inside your component using this hook, use loader data, and you can show it inside a button. So when the button is clicked, we call update count, which is the function that is coming from the backend. And we also have type safety and everything. And when that happens, we call a router that invalidates, which makes this loader reload the data and then show the UI. So I'm really excited to work soon with this library. By the way, I just open sourced my personal website, which I've been working on for a while right now. It's SEO optimized and also has rich markdown, which means that you can have React components in between markdown blocks. So that may be interesting if you want to have some kind of blog. I'm going to put the link to it in the description. And I'm actually also working on a video right now showing you how to set it up. And if you like working with React, then you may want to check out my latest video where I show you my top nine custom React hooks. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.